logic board replacement for Mac Pro A1186. The tools we're going to need are a long Phillips head screwdriver, a tool kit with a hex bit and an extension, and thermal paste. When looking at the rear of the Mac Pro, you can see that there is a latch right here on the left side of the rear. Go ahead and flip the unit down where the latch is on top. Pop the latch out with your finger. This will release the side door. You can just lift up the side door after popping out that latch. Now you can just take the door and move it out of the way. Let's remove the memory reservoirs. They have two holes on each side of the board. You can just grab them with your fingers and pull the board out of its socket. All the memory chips are on the reservoir. Go ahead, place it to the side and pull out the second reservoir. There are usually four hard drive brackets running along this line. You can go ahead and remove the hard drive by gently pulling up on the bracket and just pulling upwards and having it unhooked from the slot. It just comes right out just like that. To remove the graphics card or any peripherals, we'll need to uh, unwind these two screws that are securing all the cards. You can do this with your fingers, and if it's too tight, you can use a Phillips head screwdriver. Once you unscrew these two screws, you should be able to lift this bracket right up and move it out of the way. Now, you can go ahead and gently push uh, on the side of this plastic rear piece right there on that PCI Express slot, uh, and you can pull out the graphics card. Be careful when you're doing this. Be very gentle. Use both hands. Go ahead and pull that right out. For our next step, we'll need to remove the five Phillips head screws. There's two right here on the side of the bracket. There are two Phillips head long screws on the bottom of the bracket here. And then there's one Phillips head screw that's securing the fan assembly, the system fan. Let's go ahead and remove the two longer Phillips head screws with our long Phillips head screwdriver. Now with our short Phillips head screwdriver, let's remove the side screws. They're a little shorter. And now let's remove that one Phillips head screw securing the fan. With the four screws removed, you can see now when I squeeze down, I can actually uh, move it and there's some playroom. Uh, and that's what we want to do. We want to squish together that frame and the case with our hand, like squeeze our hand. See that little crack it creates? Uh, once that cra crack is created, you can pry out this middle piece right here. It's a little challenging. You got to wiggle it around, but you should be able to pull it out just like so and it'll come right out we can then proceed to unplug the fan go ahead and unplug it from the right side and then from the left side pry it up a little bit you can see it pop right out it'll take some wiggling but it should come out and you can see the socket right there on the bottom all right with the fan out of the way we can go ahead and get to the next harder part let's take a look here on these heat sinks for the CPUs you can see right down that slot uh, they're secured by four of these uh, hex, hex uh, screws. They're three millimeter hexes. Uh, you can see here, very dusty, but there's four on each side for an eight total. That's the hex bit right there. Go ahead and install that with the extension, okay? And then go right down that seam. I'm gonna speed this up and give you a little better angle here in a second where you can see exactly uh, how we dive in uh, with the screwdriver here take a look here see the screwdriver goes right down uh, right down along the heatsink and then we unscrew it and the screw kind of stays in place we just loosen it up we do that to all eight screws once those are loosened up we can go ahead and start removing the heat sinks. Now remember, the heat sinks are still hooked up to the logic board. So when you lift it up, 
there is a cable right there that's attaching it you see uh, go ahead and gently disconnect that uh, assist yourself with fingers this one was already loose and prepped for this video so uh, definitely make sure that you um, unplug that with your fingers and don't just tug on it move the heatsink over to the side now the second one also very tricky this one is connected to the logic board with a connection behind that bracket let's see if we can get a little better look here um, with a bracket out of the way you can see it's hooked up right there on the side and you want to gently unhook that and then move that to the side as well so this bracket here that we had dangling around this entire time it's actually a system fan so go ahead and unplug that as well and uh, move that out of the way it's part of the cooling system let's remove these CPUs go ahead and gently pop out that little uh, lever and then you can unfold and open up like a little booklet the uh, CPU frame and then just lift it right out make sure not to put it down on its uh, connectors and the second one same thing unhook the latch flip open the little booklet remove the CPU if you haven't done so already let's go ahead and remove all of the peripheral cards um, if you have any and just unplug those go ahead and remove the little spacer brackets too that close up the uh, unused slots we'll need to remove the system speaker it's secured with three Phillips head screws as you can see here one on the bottom one in that middle and one in the top they're the only screws there so go ahead and pull that speaker out of the way and unhook it from the logic board it, starting at the top right go ahead and start unhooking all the cables the power cable the SATA uh, an ID, IDE cable, um, all of the uh, power connectors, uh, and um, uh, that, that, that's the SATA uh, cable right there. Uh, just basically every single connection that you see going to the logic board, the uh, uh, heat uh, sensors uh, to the hard drives, the optical drive, the Bluetooth antenna, Wi Fi antenna on the bottom right corner there. On the left corner, the audio cable and all the uh, remaining peripheral and power cables. Go ahead and tug those out of the way. These, these are the eight screws going all the way around the logic board. Uh, they're all Phillips head. Go ahead and start removing those. Uh, there's three in the top here, one in the middle right, three on the bottom and one in the middle left with those eight screws removed the logic board should be free uh, you can go ahead and start lifting it up the SATA cable might be blocking you from lifting up the logic board so you might want to go ahead and fully disconnect that SATA cable and get it out of the way so that it's not blocking the logic board from coming out uh, with that removed you can just wiggle it around um, move the cables out of the way push it over a slight little bit to the right and then tilt it and then it should come right out just like that and here it is logic board reassembly for Mac Pro A1186 gently place the board into the following orientation make sure you're not blocking off any of the connections especially the uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna cables some of the cables up top here uh, make sure everything is unpinched and go ahead and start securing the three Phillips head screws on the top one on that side three on the bottom and then one on the uh, middle left side for eight total screws go ahead and secure that connection on the bottom right now the left uh, the audio cable the peripheral cable is now the power the IDE cable the SATA cable the sensors uh, that entire right corner go ahead reconnect the um, Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi antenna cables and that's it reinstall the speaker by hooking it up and 
to the logic board and putting it in the following orientation. Make sure that you're untucking all the cables and it sits nice and firm. Align its holes and secure it with the three Phillips head screws that we removed earlier. Um, the CPU should always be cleaned. You can do this with a cotton cloth or even a paper towel and just gently wipe off all of the residual, uh, uh, if there is any, all of the residual uh, thermal paste. The same exact thing on the heat sink. Make sure it's nice and uh, clean and has a nice and firm surface so that when it touches the CPU, they can make a uh, full um, uh, firm connection. The CPU can only go in one way. There's a sl slit slot there, so go ahead and put that in. In the following orientation, close the booklet, close the latch. Same thing for the second CPU. Uh, there's a little dot in the bottom left corner, and that's how it just goes in there. It won't be able to go in any other way. Make sure it's latched and locked in. Let's go ahead and place back the following um, uh, fan first. Go ahead and hook it up to the logic board. Make sure it's connected first. Uh, and just set it uh, on the side there. Just uh, do not screw it in yet. Apply the thermal paste on top of the CPUs, making five dots and creating like a little box. Once we put the heatsink on, it should be able to squish and smear the uh, thermal paste. Go ahead and put the first heatsink in and connect it to the logic board. Okay, and this is a little tricky. Uh, because both of these have to be connected so just kind of work around in there it'll take some time line it up okay and now secure the uh, four um, uh, hex bit screws uh, one in each corner of the CPU heatsink those four secure go ahead and reconnect the second heatsink and do the same secure the four um, hex screws now with those secure go ahead and attach that little piece first and this is really the only way that you can do this it has to be done in this orientation without being screwed in first you have to put it in and hook up the two uh, pieces here now you have to place the fan and make sure you realize it slides in on the left side and then now you kind of work them all together and interconnect them go ahead and secure that Phillips head screw on the fan now you can secure the two long Phillips head screws on the bottom of that piece and now you can secure the two small Phillips head screws um, on the side Insert the graphics card into the PCI Express slot. Go ahead and push that in. Make sure it's nice and locked. Go ahead and put back any of the peripherals. Click those in. The spacers. Make sure everything is aligned and nothing's sticking out. Or And then place back that bracket that secures uh, everything from uh, coming out. Secure it with the two uh, knob screws. The hard drive uh, slides right in on the metallic rails. So go ahead and push that in. Make sure it's firmly clicked in all the way. The memory reservoirs slide right back into their slots. Uh, you can do the left or the right. Uh, I'm doing the left one here first. And then the right one. They won't click in the wrong way, so uh, you should be fine. Go ahead, place back the top uh, enclosure and secure it make sure it's sealed and lock in that latch um, push that in and then you can stand the unit up and we're all set